Okay, turn around. Hi, welcome back to the Vintage Model Company for another build project. This time we're building a special speed Spitfire based on the Balsa Basic Spitfire kit. Let's see how far we can push this beginner friendly design into the realms of high speed. Will this design be able to hold up to speeds in excess of 100 miles an hour? Can we modify it easily? And how difficult will it be to fly? Well, all will be revealed. First things first, all of the balsa parts included in the standard balsa basics kit had to be popped out from their laser cut sheets. A knife came in handy when cutting the tabs of the denser birch plywood to reveal the main spar. As I wanted to build a speed Spitfire, I decided to shorten the wings to create a clipped wing. The downside of this is less lift, meaning higher stalling speeds, but this plane is meant to fly fast all of the time, so that wouldn't really be an issue. After modifying the spar, I mocked up the wing ribs with the spar doublers to see how it all looked. To toughen up the wing, I decided to sheet the leading edge with balsa on the top and bottom sides. This meant cutting away some of each wing rib to allow the sheeting to sit flush with the wing spar. With the wing ribs modded, I could glue the main structure together. I decided to install the aileron servos at this point and route the wires to the centre. Next, I cut some thin balsa sheet to size through a process of trial and error and then seeped cyano glue through the joins one side at a time to bond each sheet to the structure. Again, this is a trial and error process, and it needs a bit of patience, but the results really pay off.
Moving along the upper surface of the wing, I did one side at a time before starting on the underside. When this process was complete, I could add balsa filler to any gaps or slightly misaligned sheets before sanding. While waiting for the filler to dry, I could get started on the fuselage, which went together, at least to begin with, much like any standard Balsa Basic Spitfire. Each former could be self-jigged together with the tabs and slots before glue was applied to bond it all permanently. At this point the filler had dried and I could commence with the sanding to reveal a pleasantly smooth and very strong wing structure. As I had previously forgotten to add rounded wing tips, I glued these on before a little more filling and sanding. To strengthen up the fuselage a little, I decided to add some solid wooden turtle decks made from balsa, rather than using standard stringers. I soaked sheets of balsa wood in water before moulding them around a curved surface using elastic bands. The following process was similar to the sheeting of the leading edge of the wing. Next came the motor installation. The motor on this aircraft is much larger than the standard motor. There are links in the description to each component that I used in this build, so check that out for motor specs, servo sizes, and the electronic speed controller size. The size of the motor meant that I had to move it back a bit, taking the time to reinforce its mount with blocks of wood. Stringers were added to the rear of the fuselage as standard. More filler was used to smooth out the fuselage before covering.
One of the only other mods made to this plane was to strengthen the tail through doubling the thickness of the horizontal stabiliser and the vertical stabiliser. This was done by laminating multiple sheets of wood together. The functional rudder was removed to save weight and to eliminate a point of failure, and the elevator was made bulletproof with help from a length of 14 gauge wire to serve as a pushrod. Final aero mods included wing fillets made from cardboard that, although made it impossible for the wing to be removed, helped clean up the airflow around this part of the aircraft. A different canopy was used instead of the standard vacuum formed Spitfire canopy that is included in the Balsa Basic Spitfire kit, again to reduce drag, and also to make the Spitfire look a bit more Reno racery. With the plane set up and ready to go, it was time for a test flight with an onboard GPS to ready? measure the speed. Yep. Very sketchy. It, it, it'll be really far away, so don't worry about it. Give it time in the stream. Midway. All right, let's bring it around. Okay, I'm going to come low past this, okay? Yeah. Okay, going round. again. Coming round again. Going left. Oh, running out of battery. Time remaining, two minutes. <laughs> nope, it's just a lot less than that. To land. <laughs> and more of a crash. The top speed on that flight was 185 kilometers an hour, which is 114.9 miles an hour. Nice. All right, thanks for watching this video. Um, if you liked it, then check out our products down below and, well, in the link, link in the description, this is one of them. And yeah, I will uh, see you on the next one where we do another project, a build project. Um, probably won't be as fast as this one, but <laughs> all right, see you then.